We did get started a little late, so we will take just one or two questions. If there are one or two burning questions uh, from the audience, we'll take those now uh, for the panel. I think it's interesting. Um, everyone is concerned about the the effect of generative AI on us and how it is that there it, it it may take over our our function and our life. And nobody's been able to answer that question. I'm just wondering if because you're forced, like um, uh, Colonel Parmitano mentioned, uh, you're forced in space to actually not only have this human machine interface but actually human machine integration effectively in space you have to integrate with the machine and the machine will be artificial intelligence as well um, is that a way to answer this question of how can we deal with that because we'll we'll actually be observing that before we as a society have to actually deal with it because we have to do that in space so closely. We have to make the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you have to integrate the, the human and the machine, like right now in space, so closely. Can we learn from that to inform how it is here on Earth that we can draw those boundaries to where it will, you know, uh, putting me on the spot. Um, I, you know, I, I think that it, it's sort of, you, know, you made the comment about we make developments on Earth that we translate to space, but we also have observations of, of the constraints imposed by space that then come back to, to Earth and, and inform uh, applications here. So, you know, I think I'm, you make a, a really good point. Um, there's an interesting thing happening in that, you know, our acceptance of technology, AI, wearables, data everywhere, constant monitoring has increased significantly in recent years. We count our steps. We, you know, we log on, you know, Google Maps where we were in the last month. Uh, you know, my kids know where all of their friends are around the world at any moment in time. And, and I think that sort of acceptance of information has enabled us to achieve on Earth new capabilities and uh, and to really leverage that that um, information to enhance our experiences. And I think the same will be true, right? As you said, we're going to be pushed um, in space exploration to have this coexistence of machine and human that are inter, you know, intertwined, uh, interdependent. Um, I think the challenge with on the generative AI side of things is that the reason that those tools are able to do what they do is because they have large training data sets. And where, what we don't have is the training data from deep space exploration to really drive those. So that's where you sort of have to have the intelligence of the human playing into the coexistence of the machine and the system because we, we have to create new knowledge and understanding uh, before we can just depend on AI to solve whatever we're going to encounter in deep space. because this was very interesting I think that I wanted to pick you back on this question asking because this is the big problem how we prepare the AI for the unknown so like what how to answer what we don't know that's the problem because we will face those uh, challenges exploring space and we'll uh, uh, experience phenomena that we never see before so I think this is the big challenge right now about AI in space exploration because instead I think that the problem could be we could go in the opposite direction the AI will become misleading you know perhaps I would like to answer the question <laughs> so I think that maybe what I said was not, was interpreted in ways that I didn't mean. So I, when I say an artificial intelligence that can help us explore uh, space in directions or in distances that we haven't achieved yet, I'm not trying 
to, th to say that we need a deus ex machina. I don't imagine the kind of it. First of all, we, we have been trained by years and years of sci-fi that eventually the, sci the, the artificial intelligence is either going to go uh, Frankenstein and kill us all or take over in the universe, Matrix, and all those good things. Great, great sci-fi. I'm more, I, I live in 2023 right now, and so we are not there, and I'm not even thinking about those kind of constraints. We, when, when I say a machine intelligence machine, intelligent machine, an AI that will, that can take care of a spacecraft, identify a fault, respond to the fault, and repair the fault, I'm saying exactly that. I don't think the machine to think. I think the machine, I need the machine to react to problems that are known, intervene in ways that are known and limited to that. To that. I don't need the, inter the artificial intelligence to tell me about the unknown. That's why I am going. Mm. I am going to figure out the answer to the things that I cannot understand yet. Because if I can, I'm, I'm not going to teach the machine to take care of the problems that I don't know. We, as humans, are really, really, really good at finding ourselves in a situation that we haven't found before and coming out of it. One way or another, we always come out of it dead or alive. But even if we come out dead, the next person knows what to do. And that's part of the, it is part of our technology history from the beginning. All our procedures, all our most complex and adv adv advanced procedures, we always joke in, uh, in test flying, are written on the blood of those that came before. So am I going to teach a machine to think for me and come up with a solution on a problem I don't know? No, because I don't know the problem. So I'm not going to ask the, I'm not gonna ask the solution to an, to an intelligence machine. I'm, when I say artificial intelligence, it's something that we programmed to figure out the problems that we expect, intervene, and solve it. Most, a lot of machines can do that faster than we can. And that's why we use them. For the unknown, that's why we are going. Otherwise, what's the point? So those kind of philosophical questions are, are very important here on the ground right now. And guess what? They're all in the realm of, of imagination. So can, what, what, what is the value of a story written by artificial intelligence taking, taking words and concepts and ideas from millions of authors that have come up with different stories and then they are all concentrated. Is it, is it plagiarism? Is it uh, real intelligence? So those are good, all good questions for the earth right now. But that's not the kind of technology that, that I'm thinking about when I, when, I, when I dream of artificial intelligence helping us manage a spacecraft on a very long flight where humans will be a limited part of the crew. We cannot have a whole flight control room helping us and just we need other helping hands so it's not going to be mother you know or uh, or half 2000 it's going to be a different it's going to be something it's going to be a tool that serves the spacecraft and the crew not not a, an artificial intelligence that takes over and mutinies and kills us all. I, I agree I, I, that's what i said i think that i see Decision of assets, so in, like interpreted the decision before uh, the, the data, so it, I can have a more like a faster understanding of the assessment of the situation more than actually taking the decision. Okay, I will intervene every year to damage myself. So I just want to point out that we do use some. Um, I won't call it AI, but we do you for, for for things worth where the situation moves fast, launch. During launch, things are happening really fast, faster than a human could flip switches. So the computers do handle a lot of, of that. Uh, but to Luca's point of the what happens in the unknown, um, and I, I'd like to loop back to, there was an earlier question in this morning session about why, why do we have windows? Why not just get rid of the window and put a monitor up there? Well, here's why. Because if the power fails, and now your monitor won't let you see outside, he wants a window. He wants to be able to look out a window and see what's happening. And if he doesn't have the window, he's blind. So even if we have those AI systems, my job is to make sure 
everything that could possibly go wrong, even if it's a very, very slim chance that that, that will go wrong, that he has the tools he needs for those workarounds. And that's where the human comes in. That's where, but that's where you're out in the unknown unknown. And if you haven't trained the robot how to deal with that situation, it, it, yeah, it, the, the robot will only, will, can only do what it's been trained to do. And we have examples really close to our heart. Uh, Colombia, the Colombia accident is exactly a consequence of that lack of understanding and human machine interface that would have allowed a pilot to take over the, the spacecraft and actually solve it. So it happens, we learn, that's what we learn. That's why when they say, oh, the spacecraft is gonna land on its own in any condition, any situation, you don't need windows, you don't even need monitors because the, uh, the uh, AI is gonna take care of it. Well, uh, as a test pilot, I've seen, I've flown machines that were supposed to self land and I've seen them going straight for the tree that was not in the map. So uh, that's why we want, we want eyes, we want uh, over rules and, uh, capabilities. So AI is a tool, it's not the solution. And I think on that note, though humans are the delicate link, we are also the necessary piece. So I want to thank our panel again. Um, and then I, I don't know if you'll be able to stick around for discussion, but thank you for a discussion on how we are getting to space. Uh, thank you all. Family astronaut. Can we thank our moderator, Christine, did a fantastic job, and it's uh, you know so.